on a cell phone. Being a, an enthusiast photographer, enthusiast hobby photographer for, for a number of decades, um, I've never really taken smartphones seriously as an image creating device. Sure they're handy, you can slip them in your pocket, you always have it with you, um, but for enthusiasts like me, they've always been or seem to be quite limited. Firstly, the image quality has never been, historically, has never been comparable with a proper camera. Um, secondly, the, the shooting experience, to have a, like a flat, slippery device like this that could break if you drop it on a hard surface, having to hold that by the tips of your fingers while trying to compose your uh, image at arm's length rather than putting it a viewfinder up to your eye has never been very appealing. Also they have much less creative control. You don't have interchangeable lenses and until recently you couldn't have a telephoto lens on a smartphone. The small sensor as well, um, apart from having a, neg a negative effect on image quality, also means your, your ability to um, produce images with a shallow depth of field is severely limited, if not impossible. However, as I'm sure you, you're aware, there's been um, massive improvements in um, smartphone cameras in recent years. Um, the, uh, the sensors have got much more advanced, if not bigger. Um, the... The phones themselves have much more powerful processors than they used to, which has enabled much more sophisticated processing of the image, including using um, computational technology or artificial intelligence to create effects such as shallow depth of field or the illusion of shallow depth of field that would have been impossible in the past. So what I thought I'd do is compare this which is um it's a newly released smartphone the uh, sony xperia 5 2 um it's only been out about a month um it's reckoned to be one of the best smartphones on the market in terms of photography and, and videography at least that's how sony are marketing it um one of the things they seem to be making a big thing of in their marketing materials is the um, is the IAF autofocus. Um, for a few years now, Sony have, have been market leaders in proper cameras with their autofocus, especially um, human eye detect autofocus and, and more recently animal detect autofocus. Now, Sony are claiming the autofocus abilities of this smartphone are similar to their A-series cameras. So that, that, that's quite interesting. Um, that combined with um, the promise of better image quality than what you could achieve in the past. And also, quite interestingly, it actually has four lenses and four sensors in this. Um, at 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and a telephoto 70 millimeter. Um, obviously those figures are, th are full frame equivalents. So um, I thought let's, let's see how good the modern smartphone camera is these days. Um, should it give companies like Fujifilm anything to worry about? Does the image quality get very close to, for example, um, my XE3, which I'm going to be com comparing it with in this review? Um, or is it still quite a long way behind? Um, even if it is not as good as the Fuji, is it still 
a useful photographic tool for those situations where you just don't want to carry a bulky camera. Initially, I'll, um, I'll talk about the specs. Um, I'll talk about what it's, what it's like to use, a bit of background information on the phone as well. Um, then I'm going to be sharing with, with you some images I've, I've taken on the, on the phone. Some, I went for a walk around Durham City, so I took some, a few photos around the city, including of the cathedral, and also some, um, some photos along the river bank, along the river Weir in Durham. Also, um, I've been taking some portrait shots on it as well, um, because I, I wanted to test the um, eye autofocus and also see just how good or how bad this fake bokeh is um, when you're using portrait mode. I put the, some of the main features um, of the phone, um, excluding the camera features, upon the screen here. If you need more time to read it, just hit uh, pause on the video. And next I'm going to put up a slide showing the, uh, the main camera features. As you can see it's got three rear facing cameras, 24, 70 and 16mm equivalents plus an 8 megapixel selfie camera. If you need more time just pause the video. Right, next I'm going to show some examples of uh, the uh, screenshots from the Photo Pro app. Um, that's on this camera. This is um, this is it. You can see here. There, I've got the mode dial where you can select what uh, mode you uh, wish to use. On this one, you can see it's showing plus one of um, exposure compensation. Now, this is showing the focus mode selector screen. Uh, this is the face and eye detect or the focus and the file format and then you can select the white balance okay let's look at some of the output from this camera in comparison with the Fuji XE3 this is from the phone um, with the 24mm lens in portrait mode you can see the bokeh effect is not perfect. Here on the Fuji, it looks uh, a lot better, but there's no fake bokeh on this one. Obviously, this is real bokeh. And now the Xperia again. And um, this is the 70 millimeter lens this time. I think that's quite a decent image. ISO 64. And here from the XE3 with the 35 millimeter lens at f2. You can compare them. This is from the phone also at the 70mm lens, ISO 25. Quite a respectable image, I think. Here, the phone went into um, like a sort of HDR mode. And this is from, my, from the phone with the portrait mode on. In this case, it worked very well, portrait mode. This was taken with the standard lens, the 24mm lens on the phone. And from the Fuji camera you can see it's, it's a lot better um, in terms of detail and colour. Yeah, it's a lot better. This is the phone again. Respectable image, but then you'll see when, it, when I show the Fuji image, it is superior, as you can see here. Colours are better, the detail is better. It just, it just looks nicer somehow. These have been edited to taste from RAW in both cases. This is from the Xperia of Durham Cathedral. Quite respectable, that's quite decent image quality. And this time from the Fuji. Again edited to taste from RAW, both the camera and the uh, phone images. Phone again. 
quite decent image quality. And then for comparison, the same shot from the Fuji XE3. Phone again, um, plenty of depth of field, which is what you want on this particular shot. You don't want uh, bokeh on this one. And from the, uh, the Fuji camera, black and white shot here, edited from RAW from the phone. I think that looks quite decent. And now for comparison, the XE3 shot, also edited from RAW. Right, next I'm going to show some video comparison between the two, between the, the, uh, the smartphone and the Fuji camera. This footage you can see here was shot on the uh, Xperia. It's handheld, no gimbal. It looks reasonably steady because of the optical image stabilization that the camera uh, that the film provides. This 1080 footage I think is quite decent. I don't shoot in 4K so I'll not be comparing the 4K output. This is just looking out over the River Weir in Durham City. It looks reasonably steady. I'm holding it as steady as I can. I think that would be usable footage, it's not too bad. Exposure seems pretty good. And next, the Fuji camera. Now, the Fuji doesn't have IBIS in the camera body, and the lens I'm using, the 16mm XF, is unstabilised. So you can see this footage is very shaky compared to what I got from the smartphone. In fact, this is so jerky, this would not be usable. So to use this uh, camera and lens combination, really I would have to put it on a tripod or a gimbal. So it, this footage wouldn't be usable as it is. Whereas I think the output from the phone was quite reasonable. You can also compare the uh, the video image quality as well. I think not a massive difference between the two in terms of video image quality at 1080p. At least on the size of screen I'm, I'm viewing this on, which is a 21 inch computer monitor. Um, would it be replacing my Fuji kit? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, it's the image quality is still quite a, a, a good bit behind what you can get from a decent APS-C size sensor. The fake bokeh in the in photo mode it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes um, it it can it can be quite convincing. Um, you can only be when you zoom into a hundred percent that you you find faults or little giveaways that tell you it's 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 being done on a smartphone. But on some other images, as as you've seen, it is it is way too obvious. I still don't enjoy the shooting experience of using a smartphone, particularly with this one. Um, it's just so slippery. Um, it's got um, glass on the back, it's got a, a, gla a glass back panel and front panel. So if you put it on a, on a table, say, a smooth table, even if that table is ever so slightly not quite level, it will very gradually 
work its way over to the edge and then fall off. <laughs> it's a very slippery device. Also, when I was out shooting with it, I was forever afraid that I might drop it. <laughs> um, so I had to be really careful because it's quite an expensive device. We're talking £800 here. Um, £800, I mean, you, you, can, you can get a very good camera for less than £800. Obviously, there's, still, there's a lot more than take photographs. But even so, it's a hell of a lot of money. Most people, particularly if all they're doing with their images is sharing them on Instagram and on Facebook and on social media, the image quality looks fine. Um, Exposure is reasonably accurate. One thing that did greatly impress me um, is the autofocus. It looks like Sony's claims there are justified. It is very good. Um, I also like the fact that it's got image stabilization on two of the three rear cameras. Um, you've seen on, on those video clips I did, one from the phone and one from my Fujifilm um, XE3, um, the Fuji was totally unstabilized. It was an unstabilized lens, um, no optical image stabilization. And as, as you know, that, that camera does not have IBIS. So although I was holding uh, the camera as steady as I possibly could, hand holding it, uh, it was very jerky. However, if you compare that footage with um, the video footage from, from the smartphone, the smartphone looks a lot steadier. It's a um, very useful device. I like the ultra wide angle um, 16 millimeter equivalent. Um, it's not something I use all the time, but there's, there's, there's occasions where it's really useful to be able to go very wide. Um, so so that, that, is, that is quite cool. Um, you can get some really dramatic um, effects there with the, uh, with the um, perspective that that ultra wide gives you. Yeah, I found the, uh, the, the main camera, the 24mm, a little bit on the wide side for me. I would have preferred maybe 28 or 30 for that. Uh, one thing I do like, though, is the uh, telephoto camera. The 70mm equivalent, that is a, a, a very good angle of view for portraiture. Um, a lot of smartphones um, have a so-called 50mm equivalent for the so-called telephoto lens. Um, which is okay, but I think for portraiture, 70mm is better than 50 in a lot of situations. What else do I like about this smartphone? I like the looks of it. I like the, I like the, the build and finish. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it seems really fast and responsive. It feels like a premium smartphone. It's, it's very nice. Um, another thing I like about it, it has a 3.5mm uh, headphone socket or earphone jack on it which um, you can't say that about a, a lot of other high-end smartphones these days so that that is a, a real plus for me I like the fact that uh, Sony supply a, a charger with it as well um, it's it's not um, a particularly fast charger and it's not a wireless charger but at least you get a charger with it it amazes me how Apple can now sell their iPhone 12 and 12 Pro etc without charger. For me that's, that's just crazy. Uh, it may not bother some people but why not include the charger? It, it, will cost, it costs them next to nothing to include the charger so why, why miss it out? You know why leave it out? Um, so that's another thing I like about this phone uh, compared to some others. No it's not going to replace any of my cameras. I might use my smartphone a bit more now for taking more photos than I used to in the past because in the past virtually I would I hardly did any photography on my phone at all um, if I wanted to take photos I'd always have a, a camera with me um, but um, yeah this 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 will get used I will take some some snaps with this but in, in ultimate in terms of ultimate image quality and uh, and how enjoyable it is to use. I'm sorry, it just cannot compete with my Fujifilm cameras or indeed any other proper camera. Um, I can well understand though how devices like this have totally caused the, the bottom to fall out of the point and shoot market. I can't see any reason for anybody 
to buy a point and shoot camera now. A small sensor point and shoot camera, I might add. It's an excellent smartphone with a very good camera, but at the end of the day, it's not going to re replace any serious DSLR or mirrorless camera. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. If you enjoyed it, please click on the like button. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell notification to be notified of future videos. Thanks again. Bye.